Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenherz and today I want to present 5 more of the most common CDH deck archetypes. If you want to see part 1 or 2 of this mini-series, you will find links to those videos in the description box down below. So without further ado, let's get started. Toolbox decks are called Toolbox because just like a real toolbox, these decks have the right tool for any given situation. These decks all have one thing in common. The commander is able to tutor up things directly into play. This allows you to get whatever piece you might need from your deck in any given situation. Usually toolbox commanders have some kind of restriction though, just to balance them out. Some can only tutor stuff with a specific CMC, some can only tutor creatures, some can only tutor legendary stuff. However, these decks are all built in a way that enables them to kind of circumvent these restrictions. Most toolbox commanders have a tutor chain that allows them to tutor up a game ending combo in a single turn. Common examples are Oswald, Magda, Yisan, Old Sisse and New Sisse. Control decks get their name from controlling the game. You all know control from other formats, but control in CDH is very different than control in 1v1 formats. You have three opponents. You can't just spam counter spells and expect to control the game this way, because you are not trading cards one for one. Together, your opponents have a 3 to 1 card advantage, and this will eventually let you run out of resources. The regular 1v1 approach is a losing battle in CDH, so CDH control has some different angles. In addition to a large suite of counter spells, removal and bounce spells, you need control pieces that affect the whole board without draining more of your resources. Common examples are Counterbalance, Naset, Part of Veils, Khan the Great Creator, Dalthy Voidwalker, Opposition Agent or Pyroclasm. The goal of these decks is not to control the whole game, but to stop their opponents from gaining too much tempo or momentum. These decks generally disrupt as much as necessary, but as little as possible in order to conserve resources. However, they also always have a way to refuel their hands in order to be able to interact at any point. Common examples are Tassigur, Niv-Mizzet, Thrasios plus Vile Smasher and most blue commanders like Urza or Orba. Breach decks get their name from their core card, Underworld Breach. Typically these decks are in Izzet colors, but most of them have additional color identities. They try to win the game by casting an Underworld Breach and using it in conjunction with Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond or Grinding Station and a Mounted Positive Rock in order to mill the whole library and gain access to most cards in their library in order to win the game, either by assembling a combo or milling their opponents with Brain Freeze. One of the main goals of these kinds of decks is to fuel the graveyard before casting Underworld Breach. This allows you to have the value cards you want to escape with Underworld Breach and also have spare cards to use to exile for escaping other cards. Also, Jeskai based Breach decks usually play Intuition and Spellseeker because these can be used as one card combos if you have the right cards in your deck and enough mana to assemble the combo. Common examples for Breach decks are Riel, Tevesh plus Krom, Timna plus Krom, Elsha or even Omnath. Mid-range decks in other formats are often a well-balanced approach between aggro and control. However, aggro isn't really a thing in CDH. Mid-range in CDH refers to decks that are able to win with a compact combo in the early game, but mostly focus around generating a kind of draw engine which gives them a huge card advantage over all opponents and allows them to win more safely from there. Although comboing off early is possible, the decks aren't built around that approach. They rely less on rituals and similar one-time boosts, but more on engines that generate value over multiple turns in the mid to late game. The best example for this would probably be Thrasios plus Training Grounds plus Seedborn Muse. This engine can easily outvalue three opponents and allow the player to win more safely in the mid to late game. Common examples for mid-range decks are Thrasios plus Timna, Kenrith or Paco plus Haldan. Combo decks, like the name says, revolve around combos. Now you could argue that most decks in CDH are combo decks, right? But these decks are special. They don't just play any other combo that can be slotted in every deck. They play very specific combos that are mostly commander reliant and don't see any or a lot of play in other decks. These combos are of course very unique and need a whole deck build around them. They can't just be put into any other deck. Let me give you a few examples. The Gitrock monster is often mistaken as a land deck, but it's not. It's actually a dredge combo deck. And the whole deck is built around assembling a combo of Gitrock monster, deck more salvage and a discard outlet. Call equipment combo is another very unique deck that revolves around call, 
some kind of equipper like Aureok Salvagers, a free to cast creature like Memnite, and Skull Clamp. This will allow you to draw your deck and assemble any win from there. And with that, I'm out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe for more content in the future. This is Eisenerz and Auf Wiedersehen.